أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه وله وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and we are with another session of مختصر منهاج القاصدين by شيخ الإسلام القدامة رحمه الله القدامة الحنبلي القدامة المقدسي الحنبلي الموثق يعني محمد ابن قدامة رحمه الله great imam and he wrote this book مختصر من هاج القاصدين the very beginning of the series we talked about the lineage of the book you know مختصر دور مختصر means abridged or concise that means there is something detailed so it is a مختصر from another book and that book comes from another book and that book comes from another book that's the lineage of the book so when we say Imam Bukhari collected the book of hadith then somebody come and make مختصر of Bukhari and someone make a sharh on the مختصر like an explanation and somebody make notes or footnotes so that's kind of like the lineage like a human being have a lineage this is the uncle and this is the brother and this is the father and this yeah like that exactly and the books is the same thing <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, phenomena so you know where this book coming from and the ulama they have a great trustworthiness and the amana about them they don't say that this is initiated by me it's a novel idea it's like from me no they will say that you know i got this book after i read that book and i found that it was hard for people or it needs more explanation or it needs less or more they make it in poetry and somebody come and do the poetry and explain it <laughs> it's just like that so um مختصر هذا مختصر من هاج القاصدين from a book that ibn al-jawzi made and ibn al-jawzi took it from uh, another uh, book يعني عندك الامام ابن القيم ميد مدارج السالكين ان امام ابن القيم took it from الامام الهروي uh, the steps uh, منازل السائرين يعني the, the stations of those who are uh, going in the path of Allah and he made it in such a way that ابن القيم came and elaborated more on it became مدارج السالكين which is the famous book مدارج السالكين is translated to English by the way مدارج is the second book is the book that he took from his sheikh. So his sheikh has a book, Manazil mm-hmm. Sa'irin, mm-hmm. and Ibn al-Qayyim did Madarij al-Salikin. Mm-hmm. What, what does that translate to mean? Ah, Manazil al-Sa'irin is the stations of those who are traveling. Mm-hmm. But Madarij al-Salikin are the steps of those who are going. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Madarij is Madarij, يعني like a, يعني when you are walking, you are going higher as well. Okay. Elevating, yeah. Madarij al-Salikin is the 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 ascending stations of the seekers of the path. Ibn al Jawzi he make منهاج القاصدين يعني منهاج is the methodology of those who targeting al akhirah al akhirah is their target and then he here he use the same name but مختصر so he kind of abridged it. Yeah, but you you know these things in the books of fiqh is the same thing. يعني مثلا امام احمد did not write any book of fiqh but you see عمدة الفقه ابن قدامة this same one he make the book called عمدة الفقه then somebody come and say شرح عمدة الفقه then somebody maybe make it a poetry and somebody make a comment on the poetry and somebody make a comment on the comment for some يعني a lay person would kind of uh, feel this what, what is this like what, what why they are wasting their effort it's not a waste of effort it's like it, it is not because you would not see the big picture this is a procession like a time, a generation after generation. Like I come now and I want to explain to you a book that was written 500 years ago. You're not going to relate to it because he was writing it. There are rules and there are context. So the context has to be adjusted, right? So we write a book, but then it is the best way is to see how it developed. In my study of Alum Quran and Tafsir, for example, some people are not aware of that. They, read, they said, I read seven tafsir, Sheikh. And they are not aware that the seven tafsir were all contemporary to each other. And they are all getting from the same source. The same, okay. So if you read that same source, you don't need to read, to read the same, seven tafsirs. But you will not know that until you know the chronological order of the Mufassirin. Right? So if you have that map in your head, you will know that you will choose one from each generation. So instead of writing seven tafsirs horizontally, 
يريد سفن تف... يريد سفن تفسير هوريزونتلي يريد سفن تفسير دياجونالي اند دوز ار ذا ثينجز ذات يو دونت سي ان بوكس اونلي يور شيخ ويل تيل يو اتس لايك يا اتس لايك باس داون بيكوز يو نو يو هاف تو ديزيرف ذا اتس نوت لايك اني وان يو نو جيت ات ويل ابريشيت ات نو بيكوز يو نو You read seven tafsir and all of them were contemporary to each other. And they are repeating the same thing. Maybe adding something here or there. But if you go and read all contemporary tafsir, then what you're missing from 1400 years. So if you read actually seven tafsir diagonally, it will be more than enough for you. But you have to choose also. Because you are going horizontal in every stage. And you're picking the best. So t- sometimes I will read... Two tafsir on the same stage, and that is kind of needed sometimes because one is handling it from that side and one is handling it from that side, or both of them they have like a different mindset. So yeah, I will read that in the same generation. You know, one tafsir which has like a Sufi tendency, you know, and one has the other side of the spectrum. So that I need to read the contemporary because each one of them like. Is the fine? Sorry for that. You edit that part in the video, no, inshallah. Right. But it's still trying to reconnect. Okay, yeah. okay it's good now. But it's, you know, all right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so what I'm saying is like I can choose two in the same category or the same generation when they are like two the end of the spectrum or the two respected scholars, but each one of them, like they are contributing something completely different. Mm-hmm. Like I need to read the Nutaimiyah in his time and I need to read some of his opponents as well. Mm-hmm. So I need to see which one produced. Opponent does not mean they were bad people. Yeah. They disagreed with him in certain things, but they are also producing fiqh and all that. And so that's one. That's You will not know any of that unless you kind of survey the, the whole map. And you go like in the Sahaba, who are the best of the Sri Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Abbas, and uh, Ubayyu, Zaydu, and And then when you go down, okay, there is Mujahid, Mujahid ibn Jabr, and Tawus, and, you know, ibn Ata, ibn Abi Rabah, and you go down and you see the students of who, and then you go down like, it's branching off like a family, you know. And then you see now when it comes to the time of collections and all of that, like after all the four imams, then you know the spread of different sects based on aqidah, based on fiqh, based on um, usul, huh? and then each one of them write in tafsir, then you will know which one is which. And if you want the linguistic, and you want the uh, fiqhi jurisprudence, you want like uh, more of the, the, the balagha or the rhetoric or the style of the Quran, different. Different things. And you choose from each uh, generation. So you have about 10 tafsirs or maybe you concise them to five or six that you normally go to unless there is an ayah that needs further. So some ayat you just need five different tafsir and you're good. And some of the ayat you need to read like 14, 15, 16, 20 different, different ones about the same ayah until you know. But the more you, you read differences, It's not difference of opposition, but differences of variety, the more you kind of get the concept. But you don't read repetitions. I read the Tabari and then I read Ibn Kathir. What did I achieve? You see? When I read the Tabari, then I read Qurtubi. Oh, yeah. I read Ibn Kathir and then you read uh, Qurtubi or you need the Makhshari, you need to read this. Yeah. You need the Jalalin or the Sa'di, so kind of know the decipher or kind of like know the words, like, you know, uh, uh, unlock the words, you know. That's fine. Then you go to Ibn Kathir, you get more hadith and ayat and all of that. Then you go to Fi Dhalal al-Quran, masalan, or the shades of Quran. Then you know the political area of a contemporary person and how he read the tafsir, how he understood it under pressure in jail. Right? Then you go up, 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 up until you see, or you go from up, down. You see how it develops with you. فَمُخْتَصَرْ مِنْ هَجَمُ الْقَصَدِينَ is like more for a person, lay person, to get an overview of this concept. That everything physical has a spiritual counterpart. That's the whole idea he's trying to do. Salah, there is a physical thing and there is a mental and heart. Like travel today, it's a case of traveling. He said there is a travel with the body and there is the travel with the heart. You see, so this is why he is doing. But if you go now to Al-Minhaj um, Al-Qasidin, um, um, you will not find difference from what he did. The only thing that Ibn Qudama did is talk the fiqhi aspects out, took the da'if hadith out, you, you know, he kind of like modified, kind of abridged it, but there is not much difference, yeah. right? So if you read Mukhtasar Minhaj al-Qasidin, you don't need to read Minhaj al-Qasidin. You just go to Madarij al-Salikin. 
then you will know what is this all about now. Right? And you don't, if you read Madarij al Salikin, in my opinion, you don't need to read Manazil al Sa'irin. Yani. So Ibn al Qayyim expanded more. So now, if you want a concise one in the beginning, Manazil al Sa'irin. If you want a concise one at the end, it is Mukhtasim al Qasidi. And there is one close to this one, and there is one close to that. There are different ways to, okay. to look at the. That's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for asking. So this is, this is how, it, uh, yeah. how you pick somebody's mind. <laughs> nice. nice. So Kitabu Adab is Safar, the etiquette of the section of the etiquettes of traveling. Safaru wasila khalasi min mahrubin min al He said, traveling is one of the two, of two things, the definition. It is either running away from something you don't desire or running, uh, running towards something that you desire. You know, in sales over here in the United States, they teach you like it's the customer, it's either away from or towards. You have to decide. The person who's coming to buy something from you, is he away from or towards? I want to sell this cup of tea to somebody. It's not like, oh, I have a nice cup of tea here. Oh yeah, please, how much is, it doesn't work like that. Unless a person, he exactly wants your cup of tea. That's, yeah. that's you'll be lucky. But what if somebody is not purchasing? How you make them purchase? You have to know. Are they coming towards it? Man, I want a cup of tea, but not necessarily your cup of tea. So now he is going towards the cup of tea. So what are you going to do? While another person, he said, you know, do you have a hot drink? Yes, I have tea. Nah, he's away from tea. So how you convince both to buy the same cup of tea? Different approach. The one who's towards, man, you are in the right place. This cup of tea is it, like every cup of tea with, it, with something extra. I want you to taste it first, then we'll talk about the extra. You see, he's already wanting the cup of tea. But you are telling him that this is what you're looking for. So now you're going toward him, convincing him that this is what you're looking for and it will benefit you a lot. Type. What if a person is away from? Okay, he says, nah. Oh, but we have a good deal today. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So now he's running away from him. He said, huh? What kind of good deal? He said, only lasts for one hour. If you take one, I give you one for free. Mm, okay. So now he was going away. You're trying to bring him in with something else. But traveling, it's either you are going to get something or you're going to run away from something. So if a person is running away from something, you invite, you tell them that travel is what will get you away from. Like Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, when he ran away from Egypt and went to uh, Shu'aib, you know that man, and he told him, لا تخف نجوت من القوم Your travel is gone, you know, you're already away from what you're scared of. So you're good, because he was running away. But if somebody is going towards something, is traveling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? It's different. Sayyidina Musa also, when, you know, they're telling him the people are, you know, behind, the, uh, behind us, he said, Allah with me, he is going to guide me, right? So, is from, away from. But when he is telling them to go toward the city, you know, telling him what they're going to achieve and what they're going to lose if they don't. So, always when somebody is away from, you tell them what they are losing if they don't do. And if somebody going toward it, you tell them how much they achieve if they go getting. This is the whole idea. Yeah. For even in Islam is like that, and Quran is like that. So any theory they teach about sales, or it's in our religion. Yani Allah is inviting us, and he said, if you want interest, I'll give you the interest doubling your capital. Nobody will do that. Capital itself. Yani anybody interest, he said, you give me this, I give you 2%. 10%, 50%, that's يعني, dream. But Allah Azza said, I will multiply your capital. There is nowhere else yeah. is that. So he knows that you are towards that. He's telling you, you can more. You, if you are away from something, then he tell you, no, you, that's what you're losing if you do not do that. Yeah. So, he said, safaru safaran. Now we, the definition is either you are going away from something or you're going towards something that you want. Now what are the types of travel? He said there is the travel of al-badan, the physical bodily travel from your home, home, uh, 
hometown, from your country, from your state, traveling somewhere else. That is called safar. And there is a distance that's called that I'm out of. If you are traveling around in Houston, it's not travel, even though it's a 70 mile radius or whatever. But once you leave and you go toward Dallas or San Antonio or Austin, now I'm traveling. Because that's what I'm considering my town. Okay? That's one. And the other one, he said, is the travel of the heart from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. أَسْفَلِ سَافِلِينَ وَأَعْلَى عِلِّيِّينَ He says, you know, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ The human being by disobeying Allah is where? As, and your heart, when it gets to the lusts and desire and all of that, it is like kind of sinking down there. So how you make your heart travel upwards toward the heavens? Ah, that's an understanding. If you have that understanding, so when you say, Allahu Akbar, you are in your place, but your heart is traveling. And that is how people look for khushu'ah. Why I don't have khushu'ah? Why this? Why that? Because you're stuck. You are having your car, the best car there is, the, uh, the sportiest of cars, the most efficient of cars, but you're not driving it. You are holding the wheel and pretending that you are driving. It's like somebody doing vroom, vroom, vroom with his mouth yeah. while he has the best yeah. car. Just put the key in the engine, man. Drive. Drive and use the vehicle that you have. So, or somebody having a truck, like everybody, just to show off. Yani the truck in its origin, the way we were raised when we were young, it is only for construction people. Yeah. And the people who put something in the, yani why do I have a truck? And I'm not offending anybody. Why do I have a truck with the thing in the back? Huh? I have one. MashaAllah, <laughs> why you have that? But you are not carrying anything. It is more of a status, it's more of a culture, it's more of a... And you might do things, but that's not why you bought the truck. Before you buy a truck, because you're going to carry stuff in it. You don't buy a sedan. But now, you're a big guy, you are this, you are that, the truck is like more of a Texas yeah, thing. Texas. <laughs> so that's, I understand that. Yeah. But what I'm saying in the original yeah, material yeah. aspect of it, like why would you ride a sports car? Mm-hmm. To speed. Mm-hmm. Right? But if you are living downtown and you buy a sports car, why? Because you want people to say that he has that kind of car. So it's, now it's not serving the purpose. So when you are in the salah, your heart is supposed to travel up, but you are sinking it down. It is exactly like someone standing there and not using the vehicle or you're going backwards to the ditch. And that travel has to be there. You travel, but every day you travel when you stand in front of Allah. Every day you travel when you say dhikr of Allah. Every day you travel when you are good, doing something good. Then you will see your heart is somewhere else. You will not be affected by these things. You see, subhanAllah, it's a small concept. Yeah, small. And it changes the way you, you think small. about everything. Yeah. Ah, yes. So he says, From asfal safilin, the lowest of the low, to malakut al-samawat, to the highest of the high. And he said, this is the most honorable of the two types of travel. Um... Uh, for everybody, everybody, he said, everyone who uh, stays on the stage of birth, like when they're born and what their parents taught them and sticking to the culture and the, the tradition and all of that, he is always going to be stuck without development. There is no advancement. So it's if you only uh, stick to what يعني, you are born with, the fitra, and with what your parents say, telling you, then you lost. Yeah. Yeah, those are the foundations. But you have to build on them. Sharpen them. Wipe them. Polish them. How you polish them? By education, by ilm, by seeking knowledge, by reading Quran, by going to scholars. That's how you... Look, you just learned that now. Yeah. And he wrote it like a few hundred years back. But the benefit comes from that. Now, if you did not expose yourself to something like that, you'd stay a few more years. Without knowing why I am who I am, why I cannot develop, why I cannot feel that importance. He said, because your heart has to travel. See, how small is the sentence? Mm -hmm. But it means a lot. Now, if you stick, yeah, your parents are good people. Community are good people. But you're not going to go more. You're not going to go more unless you get to uh, seek more uh, knowledge. So he said, the traveling of the body 
it has types it has uh, different uh, types so I have the definition of travel going away from or going towards you have two types of travel the body and the spirit or the heart and then the body type the traveling with the body it has divisions and it has benefits and it has also disadvantages and problems uh, it is exactly like what we studied seclusion and no seclusion each one has this and that so you have to decide who you are first to know which one fits I'm a student of knowledge it's not enough for me to travel with the heart that is the worshipper aspect but I still do not have to travel with the body there is a sheikh here I have to travel to them I cannot say I'm going to do tahajjud only so for me traveling with the body is better but for someone who does not have that or does not have it in them and they like to worship traveling with the heart is better so each one uh, so you have to decide who you are and what are you capable of and what you are longing to but both at the end will lead to Allah Azza wa but one of them is focusing on himself and one of them is focusing on himself to benefit others so he said that the benefits of travel that makes a person travel we're talking physical now the incentives for you to travel it is either going towards or away from everybody has to happen you are traveling to escape something escape something or you are traveling to gain something um, example if there is a disease in an area you leave it and you are afraid to so you leave um, or there is a recession economy or there are people threatening you or you are not comfortable in your job so you're going for a physical or material aspect away from to seek that we migrated to come here because we're running away from different things and we're coming here towards different and everybody running away from something they're going toward the opposite and anybody going towards something they are running away from the opposite or less you're going toward more that means there is less you're running away from less means you want more <laughs> they're both the same mm. or it is something in the religion uh, some some sometimes a person who's having fitna like they are working 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 here and making money and all that but they are not praying and they see that they are sucked into this black hole of gaining money and all that and they want to worship Allah Azza so they go to Medina or they go somewhere that they so now they are also for their religion they are running away from losing their religion to gaining their religion the other one is losing their dunya or health and gaining their dunya or health so sometimes the physical travel has a spiritual cause so it has a material or physical cause or a spiritual cause and the religious cause as well but you end up traveling by yourself physically um, right um, type what you are running towards as I said the opposite you're running towards from you're running away from poverty that means you want to be rich you're running away from ignorance you want education you're running away from uh, this place that you will not worship Allah better to a place that you worship Allah better so it's always the uh, opposite yani. um, and at all times no one would be labeled a scholar except if he travels extensively that was the rule from the time of Sahaba yeah yani because there were no internet no internet like how would you reach people like we're reaching them now you have to go yeah. how you learn you have to go like how somebody will listen to a lecture like this or to Ibn Qudama they have to go to Ibn Qudama how يعني, he's gonna deliver right message and they carry it well, it so. can happen once every now and then but they want it's either he travels and people go around find them so they know who's in the Hajj this year and everybody goes to them uh, or with them like some students would go with the Sheikh if he's going to Hajj because this long trip two three months they are learning <laughs> And they do khidma, you know, service to the sheikh and all of that. And they write, oh, and he stopped like this, and he make hajj like this, and he did that. So they give a ritual of the sheikh, such and such. So that was the old time. Now, internet and Zoom and this and that, and everybody can be a scholar, actual scholar, without traveling. 
but they listen to the shuh. But all time, the travel, physical travel had a point, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but if you learn by yourself and read and do dhikr by yourself, that's good too. You know, but there are things that you have to travel for. Things you can get on your own, things you can get from your local imams and scholars, and there are things that you have to travel and things that you have to travel further. It depends how, how far you want to go and how much you are eager to achieve. So, uh, the, the, yani the, the person, he's saying that, fil jumla, in general, he said, what is the benefit of this travel, physical travel? He said, Imam Ibn Khudama, that in your, in your locality, in your atmosphere, in your uh, comfort zone, yani, normally, uh, the people will not know their negativities. They will not know their uh, shortcomings. Because either you don't see it, you're not tested in a strange environment, uncomfortable zone, or the people around you, they kind of like don't criticize because they love you, they, you know, so they don't. But when you travel, you are out of your comfort zone, out of your elements. Then now you're going to be tested. Now your true self is going to come out. And people's true self also will come out. Because not your father, not your mother, not your friends, not your siblings, not your co-workers, not your classmates. You travel somewhere else, then your true self is going to come out and their true self is going to come out. Yes, that's why I said Umar when somebody came to him and said, I know, uh, he said, you know said that person? He said, yes, I know him. He said, did, did you eat with him? And you had a meal together? He said, no. Did, did you guys like have a relationship like marriage or something? He said, no. Did you buy Something from him? He said, no, did you sell him something? He said, no, did you travel with him? He said, no, did you know him? Because those are the things that expose people. Like when food is put, then you know who, who shares and who doesn't. Who is greedy and who doesn't. Who the man is and who doesn't. And if you sell or buy, then you know who he cheats and who doesn't. And if you travel, then you know the person's true self. Having patience or not. This or that. That's why you find some people, they get irritated by traveling. So they choose their companion, who is patient and everything. So they said, you know what, I, I, I can't travel except with this guy. You know, because we you know you make their life easy. That's why when I go to Hajj or Umrah, I always figure the person who has the patience the most, and he becomes my assistant. Right, because you get frustrated. People keep pushing you, pushing you, pushing you until the last straw comes, and then you shout at somebody. Mm-hmm. But when there is someone like who can absorb that, yeah. there are some people by nature, they are nice. Mm-hmm. They're good. So you tell them that to communicate, you know, your messages and all that. Yeah. So you can plan and you can do things properly and they can have the customer service. So traveling and selling and buying and having a meal together and marrying from each other. Those are the things that shows. But traveling is one of the most and easiest. You find it very easy. Once you are in the airport, you see how people dynamics completely different. When you get to the airplane, you're going to put your, your luggage or my luggage. You're going to take the window seat or the aisle seat. Or you're going to sit in the middle for me or not. You see? So the whole idea is <laughs> it's like changes, right? We love each other and everything. But once it comes with my comfort yeah. and we're traveling and this is a long trip, then who's going to sacrifice for who and who's going to accommodate who? Yeah, that's, that's why travel is a, is a big deal to know. Uh, who, who is, yeah, so that's why you go out of town, you go camping, you go like that. Then you will know who you can depend on and who you can't. Um, also, he's saying that uh, one of the benefits of travel is to see the ayat of Allah in his land, the signs of Allah. You see the trees, you see the mountains, you see the valleys, you see the, the waterfalls, you see the snow, you see the heat, you see the... Animals, you yeah. see things, like elements, yeah, that's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. And people sometimes, they like to go to safari, they like to go to Alaska, but they don't know why. Mm-hmm. You tell them, you said, oh, it's just like an amazing thing, it's like exotic thing, but why? Mm-hmm. I keep asking them why, but they don't come up with an answer. Mm-hmm. I want to enjoy the elements, but why? Mm-hmm. They don't have a cause. We as a Muslim or a practicing Muslim should have the cause. Allah created me to worship him. Even by enjoyment, I'm worshipping Allah. So when I see those amazing things, 
it gets me closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. So when I go to Antarctica or I go to, you know, the Arctic thing or I go to this or that or I go to safari or I'm trying to see this amazing creation of Allah and I get closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also, you travel away from transgression, travel away from fitna, from luxury. And you travel toward humbleness to see other experience, other human beings, other signs of Allah, something to make you a better person, more experience. When you're exposed to different things, then, then you come up with different ideas. Then you can advise people and so on. Uh, we'll stop here, inshallah. And next time we're going to talk about the permissible travel and the haram travel. And somebody traveling for gambling uh, and somebody traveling for umrah. Well, that's travel, that's travel. Or somebody traveling just for a vacation. Just to, to relax on the beach. It's not haram, but it is mubah. Mubah means allowed. When we say allowed, mubah or permissible, that means it can be haram or can be actually important to do. So it depends what, what you're trying to achieve. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.